We had Elvis in for a movie during the regular performance at the Malco on the mezzanine, which is Orpheum now. Didn't work out at all because someone saw him and uh, we almost had a riot. Uh, he uh, got involved with the, the Crosstown, which is one of our deluxe theaters, but it was large. Didn't like it. And he went to the Memphian and uh, loved it. He was, it was, he was comfortable there, he said. Malco, through Paul Schaefer, donated the theater. Everything involved except Elvis paid for the projectionist and the concessionist. After we cleared the house, the movie was over. We locked up, turned out all the lights on the front, and waited for him. We had someone down at the exit, which was off of Union then, and uh, he would come in park and he would come in. Everybody that attended, and they started forming right after we closed the box office, and they, we would have 25, 35, up to 100 people out there. Now how they found out about this, I have no idea, probably word of mouth. And uh, we would let Elvis in, he'd get situated and everything. His crew, nice bunch of guys, I don't care what anybody says, we enjoyed them, and we enjoyed Elvis. And uh, he would select, they would select who they were admitting that night. One young man was president of the uh, Elvis Presley fan club, first, first fan club he had. He had, he, he was in a wheelchair, but Elvis always greeted him, always. We would start the movie. Everybody that came in got free candy, free pop, anything we had, they got free. We keep a record of him, we bill him about once a month. And uh, we'd crank up, Elvis took nothing except water. He drank 48, we kept up with it, 48 ounces of water, uh, no ice, uh, every time he came in. Everyone come in, they were very nice, quiet, polite, and they would maybe, for the movie start, they, hello Elvis, how are you doing? And, but generally, they appreciated and respected his privacy because he didn't get it very often. About two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, he would have one of the boys go get him a hamburger maybe. Then not very often, but he'd get hungry, he'd go I'll send for a hamburger. And uh, he'd eat his hamburger and sit there, and if he felt like smoking, which is, we have a <laughs> law against that, but anyway, we thought it was Elvis, and we had his own smoke stand there and put it in the office every night after he got through, or every morning before he got through. And uh, if he felt like smoking, he did, and we just treat him like he was a guest, which he was. Dr. Strangelove, Dr. Strangelove, he saw it, to my knowledge, 12 times. And he could, he knew the dialogue, and he would talk to them as they got, he would ask the question that they just answered before the fellow on the screen asked it. I'll tell you what he didn't look at. He never looked at his own movies, and he didn't look at Anne Margaret. Now, I don't know if Priscilla had something to do with that or not, <laughs> but uh, outside of that, he just went to jump. Whatever was available that he thought he would like, he tried it on. And if it didn't work, he would stop them. Stop the movie, and we'd buzz the booth. They'd take it off and put on the next movie. I never did, never did have any problems with any of the patrons, his crew, and certainly not Elvis.